baseball fans and welcome interleague baseball on MLB the show it's the Chicago Cubs and the Texas Rangers all right we'll be back to get this one started after this just about to get underway and on the mound for Texas in this one, Nathan Evaldi. What do we have on him? He's got that splitter, and it's a pitch that swings and misses, come fast, and they come often. Very difficult to pick up out of his hand. Here's Nico Horner. Leading off the afternoon for the Cubs. The second baseman, Nico Horner. And a pitch. Just oh, off the right. outside edge, and we're underway. This to center field. Tavares makes the grab one away. Here's a look at the Cubs lineup. This is a veteran-led lineup right here. A lot of players with plenty of experience singing. Yeah, no doubt about that, Boog. These players have been around the game for a long time, and they may not have the flash that they once did, but they've got the wisdom to be able to understand different situations, be able to think with the opponent and sometimes in front of the opponent. And you always seem to see a team like this. They come to the ballpark, they know how to get down to business, and they understand what the job is at hand. Bounced out to short. Seeger zips it across, and Swanson is set down. Batting third, the left fielder, number eight, Ian. Ian Happ up to hit. That one misses. Up. Ball one. Two outs, bases empty. There's a strike. Well, he got away with the mistake right there. A curveball that backed up a little bit, stayed high in the zone. You won't want to throw that one again. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Pitch misses there. Two balls, two strikes. On the ground at first. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. And the Cubs are down in order. Now the Rangers will get their first crack. We're scoreless. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. And we're back. And on the hill, the lefty, Justin Steele. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, I'm interested to see how he utilizes his sinker to this lineup, Boog. You know, it's not necessarily his go-to primary pitch, but he does mix it in when he needs it. He's just got to make sure that it's not flat. Otherwise, it's going to get hit hard. So look for him to throw it up there when he needs a big double play, a ground ball, something like that to get out of an inning, change it up for a hitter. Also, get those hitters looking down so that it opens up the top of the strike zone, especially late in an at-bat. And now we take a look at the Rangers lineup. And the key to victory for them here, get their starters some run support early. Boog, if they can get him that run support early, it's likely the other team folds because they know how dominant he can be once he gets settled in. So put pressure on that other team right away. Jump out to a lead early and a few runs is going to feel like 30. Corey Seager stands in now and watches strike one. Steal an all-star a season ago. 28 years old, and he was a fifth-round pick back in 2014. And that one hammered. That's back. And gone! And it gives him the lead in the first. It's 1-0. That's a fun way to take the lead. Just hit one out of the park.
with a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. Base is empty, one away. Adolis Garcia stepping in for the Rangers. Misses just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. One out, base is empty. Up the middle. He gets there with the slide. Fires to first, and they get the out. Fastball grew right down the middle. Usually a lot of damage done with that pitch. A hard grounder, but he wanted to get that ball in the air, maybe drive it into the gap. Carter. Evan Carter stepping in for the Rangers. There's the strike. Carter getting the start in left. Batting in the cleanup spot. And he was a second round pick in 2020. Two down, nobody on. Strike two. Pretty rare location right there, right down the middle. This guy paints the edges. I'm not sure if you're going to see that pitch again as a hitter. And one and two. Well, he missed badly with that 0-2 fastball. Hitter has to understand. Probably wants to try to put him away with that pitch, so got to stay ready for it. Wouldn't chase that time. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's now a one nothing ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. And welcome Cody back to the ballpark. Go. Now at the plate, the Cody Bellinger. Go, Siggy, this is a guy that grew up in big league clubhouses, and it's something that you see throughout the game. Sons, whose fathers also played the majors. That one is upstairs. That one's in there. And the count even at one. Umpiring behind the plate for us today, Boog, is Mike Fillmore, and he is a good one. He'll reward pitches on the edges a little bit, but the main thing is he doesn't keep you guessing. Once he established that a pitch is a strike, it stays that way. Yeah, Fillmore, kind of, I don't know, you'd say maybe an umpire's umpire, but really consistent, very fair. Fights it off, you'll see another. The one two foul ball left side he'll see another and here comes two ball, two strike. he fouls it off we'll do it again and a pitch. Good job to fight that one off. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. 2-2 two -two now. On the ground right side. Steps on first for the out. Next for the Cubs, Seiya Suzuki. First pitch, and he just misses. Ivaldi, multi-time all-star. He features a four-seam fastball, a splitter, a cutter, a curve. And he works in a slider. They can live up in the zone all game if hitters will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitters got to look down in the zone. And that's off the inside edge. And it's two and one. Ow. 
right through there for a strike. Back-to-back -back fastballs in. That last one called for a strike. Probably go away, but look for him to come back in there to try to finish you off. And another ball. These first two hitters really making him work out there. Already 14 pitches this inning. The Cubs trailing by a run here at the top of the second. Popped up. Low hauls it in, and there's two away. Well, that's a frustrating end to the at-bat for the hitter right there. I mean, that pitch was right down the middle. I think he got a little too excited, came out of his mechanics, and instead of driving that ball somewhere, he popped it off. Unfortunate for him. Christopher oh, Morrell inside. in the box here lets that one go for a ball. Just missed. Misses off the play. Three balls, no strikes. Jan Gomes waiting to hit for the Cubs. Foul ball. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. The pitch. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Two outs. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Three up, three down for the Cubs. Still behind by a count of one to nothing. Bottom half of inning number two. Down the third baseman, Josh Young. Steel back to work. Wouldn't oh, chase that time. Steel, not a big strikeout guy, but still very effective as far as starting pitchers go. One of those guys that involves the defense and really gets him involved in the action. Nope. That That's one missing inside. inside. He moves the ball around all the quadrants of the strike zone and will add and subtract velocity. And because of that, he gets the weak contact. It's all about missing the barrel of the bat. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, great stop to first. It's there, and that's a great play. Well, this is obviously a tremendous play, but for me, it starts with a well-broken-in glove. To have the confidence to go down, knowing that ball is going to be right in the pocket, so you've got a clean transfer, pop back up to the feet, and fire across the diamond. Outstanding job. Here's Nathaniel Lowe. Oh, and that's too high. It seems like this type of guy is kind of a dying breed nowadays. Well, exactly. When teams are looking for high velocity, high strikeout rates, a guy like this doesn't necessarily do that. So in order to really appreciate how good he is, you have to see him. Because if you're just looking at a stat sheet, you might overlook him. That one the other way. Already two out here in the home half of inning number two. Two outs, space is empty. Jonah Heim stepping in for the Rangers. He's built his reputation as one of the top framers in the sport. First offering, and it just misses. Right through there for a strike. The 1-1. One, one. And another ball. Oh. 
Next That's offering ball. upstairs. Two down, nobody on. Bottom half of inning number two. Swing and a high fly ball, deep left field. Way back there. Travel. Three, two. And he grounds one to the right side. Oh, the throw is over his head. You know, two out errors are kind of like two out walks and sometimes even worse. You know, you think you're out of the inning, but all of a sudden you get another out to get and the offense has a great opportunity. They're looking to take advantage of and make you pay for. Here's Leody Tavares. That one finds the zone and it's 0-1. Heim, the runner at first with two gone. That's Just missed. That's and it is two three. and one. Ripped, but it curls foul. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. And that's outside. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. Fouled off again, and it remains 3-2. and two. And that's nope, too high, ball, ball four. four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Not what he wanted to do right Not there, Boog. That keeps this That's inning alive, puts a runner in the scoring yeah. position, and a chance for this offense to add on to their lead. And stepping in is the speedy Ezekiel Duran. Well, bottom of the order here, Boog. you got to go right after this guy. As they look to pick up an add-on run, and the number nine guy at the plate. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Oh and one. First and second, two down. And that's in there at the knees. Man, I'm pretty impressed out there on the mound right now. I mean, these are tough spots where pitchers really got to bear it out. Those last two pitches were well executed. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. The pitch. Three. Got him swinging. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Rangers leave a pair, but they lead it one to nothing. All set for the start of the inning. Here's Jan Gomes. Yon Jones. And he deals. Not oh, close with that one, and it's one to no. Hard hit to right center. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. Well, off the bat, it looked like they might get that tying run on base, maybe even extra bases. No dice, though. A little unlucky on that one. So digging in, Michael Bush. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter.
Missed to third, and it stays fair. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. Run around at first with one gone. Here's Nick Madrigal. That's a strike. 0-1. Oh, 0-1's one. Oh, the count. With the go-ahead run at the plate, we're here in the top half of inning number three. Edge of the zone for a strike, and it's not again two. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And he'll two. That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. Kicks and deals. That nope. just misses. Now one and two. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. Swings and misses, struck him out. Typically that high fastball, if it's close to the top of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect it to, and that's why you see the swing and miss. Next to hit, Nico hey. Horner. There's the strike up high. Going one. Right now, they're looking for something hit hard into the gaps. Give them an opportunity with two outs to score that run from first. Ivaldi checks the runner. Back in safe, really close. And that one is lifted in the air. Brings it in with a nice run and grab. And that is that. Cubs leave one. They trail here. one nothing. As we go to the last of the third. And now it's the Rangers leadoff hitter. Marcus Simeon. Simeon. As the lefty gets to work. Yeah. Right through there for a strike. Just one. missed. One ball, one strike. Kicks and fires. Fouled off left side. And now it's one and two. Line to second, snagged on the bounce. Nicely done for the out. The batter, number five, shortstop, Corey Seager. Now it's Corey Seager. He's already homered here in this one. This guy makes great contact, one of the best in the game at putting bat on ball. He's got such quick hands, and he's gaining pitch recognition. That keeps him square to the plate. There's a good chance that his bat stays in the zone a long time, and that produces solid contact consistently. Not sure if he was expected for the pitcher to come right at him, but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way. Ball one. And yeah, that's downstairs and outside. Got a good eye there. Base is empty one away here in the last half of the third. And that one fouled off. Well, he gave up on that pitch early, and it ended up staying in the zone. I'm sure he's kicking himself and would like that pitch again. Ground ball to the right side. 
Bush steps on the bag and two straight set down to begin the bottom of the third. The right fielder. Adolis Garcia stepping in for the Rangers. Grounded out to short in his first trip. Pitch misses, and that's ball one. That's down and in. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. The lefty fires. That one spoiled, and the count now two and one. Nice. And there's the strike. Gets a piece and stays alive. And that's in the dirt. Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. He'll circle the bases and they boost their lead. It's 2 nothing. A little more breathing room is always a good thing in baseball and now they have it. Clearly some frustration out there on the mound right now. I mean, that ball was so close to going foul. Would have been a long strike, but instead, batter gets rewarded. Did a nice job of getting to the pitch and hitting it hard enough to get over the fence. Now the batter now, Evan Carter. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Left-hand hitter waits. And that one upstairs. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Up the middle, Swanson on the run, sends it over to first. In time, got him, and that'll do it. But the solo shot stretches their lead even further. It's now a 2-0 ball game. You're dialed into the show. Start of the fourth, and now the shortstop, Dansby Swanson. Swanson, former first-round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Vanderbilt player in college, college World Series player, all that good stuff, but really coming into his own. Ball that one, one missed. Counts one and oh. And the right-hander deals. Foul ball there. Next pitch is outside. Cuts out it and misses. That's a strikeout. Gassed it right by him. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, but it worked. He got the swing and miss, and I'm sure a bit of sigh of relief after seeing that one go through the zone. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Ian Happ. Out there to center. Tavares settles under it. Puts it away for the out. The center fielder, number 24, Cody. And up to the Bellinger. plate comes Cody Bellinger. 0 for 1. He grounded out to first his last time. That 
It's a bullet, but it goes foul. Right-hander kicks, deals. There's a strike. This guy's not wasting any pitches. Hitters got to get in the swing mode. This is a good time to expand the zone. Throw something maybe down in the dirt. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. The wind of the pitch. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. Cubs are down quietly. They trail it here 2 0. Back here with my pal Siggy. Bottom of the fourth. Here's Josh Young. The wide to kick the pitch. And there's a foul ball. Well, these Rangers showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. It's still relatively early, but with the pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set them up to do more damage one later ball. in this game. Two Not even close there. Going to count one and two. The one two and another ball that one blasted deep to right that's back there that's down one hops off the wall into second easily with a leadoff double he went up there and got it. With two strikes, I'm not going to leave this in the umpire's hands. I'm going to be aggressive. It was in a location where he could get those arms extended that he loves to do. So nice job right there. Coming back and that at bat. So a man aboard. And here's the first baseman, Nathaniel Lowe. Swing and a foul straight back. Runner in scoring position, nobody out. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. Bellinger sizing this one up. He makes the grab. Runner tagging for third. In there safely. And here is Jonah Heim. He's 0 for 1. Here's a sack fly situation, and he's got to make sure he gets the ball out over the plate and get those arms extended. They're trying to crowd him with the infield in. It's going to be a big pickoff. Swing and a ball popped up. Base hit and a run in to score. Comes through with the RBI. With the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, both from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. Leody Tavares stepping in for the Rangers. First pitch just misses. Time. The runner at first with one gone in the inning. Swings and misses. And the count one and one. Way out front for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Next one is off the plate. The count now two and two. Swing and a miss. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Well, that high forcing fastball has become such a great pitch for pitchers to finish hitters off. They're trying to stay back with two strikes, make sure that they can handle something off speed and just with good spin rate, good rotation through the zone, Elevated a little bit, get it. 
Ball, this one high and deep. Way back there. And it hits the fence. Around third. Relay throw home. The tag, and he's safe. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. First pitch fastball in a great spot to do some damage, and he squared it up nicely. So the Rangers batting order turns over. Marcus Simeon stepping in for the Rangers. Inside, that's inside ball. and that's ball one. Two outs and one in scoring position. Bounced up the middle. Fires to first on the run. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. We're headed to the fifth. It's the Rangers four and the Cubs nothing. And we're back. Leading Top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Seiya Suzuki. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. And that's a little bit high. And that is ball one. You know, these Cubs just aren't putting together very many good at-bats in this one. Just one base runner to this point, and it's not exactly early anymore. They've got players in this lineup capable of sparking something, but it just hasn't happened for them yet. In the air, right field. Automatic double now as it hops the wall in foul ground. Well, there's something really nice about getting yourself an automatic double like that. You get to stroll into second base without having to worry about a throw or getting your uniform dirty. And now you're just looking for the next guy to kind of do the same thing. Maybe put one in the gap so you can jog home as well. So, man aboard, Christopher Morell getting ready to hit. 0 for 1, he struck out swinging last time. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. And that's a foul ball. Righty delivers. Down the middle for a strike. And it's 0-2. You're going to get something going. This is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. Man at second. Foul ball. It stays nothing in two. Ball and a curve outside. misses outside. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. That's about as nasty of a splitter as you'll come across, especially in terms of movement. I mean, that thing tumbles out of his hand and just drops off the table at the last moment. If he keeps it down, it's just so tough to put wood on. The Cubbies down by four, and we're at the top of the fifth. Out towards left center. And that'll fall for a base hit. Coming home. He'll score easily. It's 4-1. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. Hooked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely. And that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. Man at first with one gone. Michael Bush, the next Cub to hit. One for one with a single so far. Starting to go after it. Now we'll look down to third. No swing. Kenny Jansen with the call.
And That's there's a ball. Two. Two and oh. And a pitch. That one ripped, but foul. Pretty impressive. We haven't seen that pitch from him much, but he's got a really good feel when he throws it. At the belt and fires. Stays alive. Two two on the way. And that's outside. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. Well, it might be time to dig into that bullpen. He's looking a little fatigued to me. Two on with one out. Here's the third baseman, Nick Madrigal. There's a strike. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Gomes over at second. Bush over at first with one away. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And now it's even one and one. It's a strikeout. Just couldn't catch up on the low 90s fastball right there. And that's a result of a good job of changing speeds. Off speed pitch on the one before, then sped him up. Pitchers that don't throw real hard have to rely on location and mixing up the speeds. That wasn't the best location with the fastball, but clearly that wasn't the pitch he was looking for at the plate either. And yeah, the batter now, Nico Horner, right through there for a strike. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Two outs, couple of base runners at first and second. That's Off the ball. mark there. One ball, one strike. Just off the inside edge. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. And down to their final strike. <laughs> One strike away. And another ball. Dansby Swanson on deck for the Cubs. Swing and a miss struck him out. And that is the ball game. I don't care if you're a top team or you're a middle of the pack team. Every ball club wants to be dominant at home. Winning a game like this just helps to boost the confidence and makes you look forward to coming out again for the next one. 4 1 the final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.